The following video is sponsored by Raycon, and we're merely in the world of the everyday earbuds. They're a smooth, sleek, comfortable earbud that sounds better than ever before. In my travels around the house during the day, I like freedom. I prefer not being restrained on a computer for hours on end, yet failing miserably at doing so. Nothing drives me more than listening to music on YouTube. You know from experience, you fall in that rabbit hole, there's no stopping it. Considering that the everyday earbuds have over 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life? That's a lot of music to listen to. It's a driving force for me. And with Raycon's offerings, they make it incredibly seamless. It's also in the easy earbud tap functions, 3 sound profiles, and they're sweat and water resistant. Plus, they start out at roughly half the cost of other major brands? No brainer for me. I wish I had this kind of offer when I got mine. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash utree to get 15% off your order with free shipping. So what are you waiting for? Get yourself a pair of Raycons. Get five. Get as many as you want. Just keep listening to this video while you do. Carolina. Yeah. Quite the season they had, huh? Let's go over the positives of their 2023 campaign in painstaking detail. It ended. Quite an exhaustive list of accomplishments, as you can tell. Would you rather me go over the negative? Those have been done to death, but if there's anything that David Tepper enjoys more than anything else, it's beating dead horses. Or panthers, in this case. The reason why I'm doing this is simple. A little over a year ago, I made a video about Tepper. I noted him as having an interesting trajectory, but it was hard to read his future. He had some major red flags, but I wanted to see if he could rectify his issues and guide his franchise through murky waters. This was a critical year for Tepper and Carolina as a whole, and many big decisions had to be made. He failed. At all of them. Miserably. That might honestly be an understatement. When you're getting comparisons to Dan Snyder, it's dire. And that can only be understood if you go back to when the last video left off. By the end of 2022, the Carolina Panthers were at a crossroads. The rule of law had proven to be a farce and the team was starting to get dismantled. Pieces sewn off and the relentless struggle to find an identity. But there were some positive signs to end the year. Interim coach Steve Wilkes was starting to get buy-in from the players. After a 2-7 and seven start with all seeming loss, the Panthers did something rather unexpected. They started winning games. They started playing with moxie. They started forging an identity. Running the football with authority supported by a Sam Darnold aerial assault. Wilkes rebounded to finish with a 500 record as coach. It was a feel-good story, but they just weren't good enough. That final loss to Tampa Bay? It would have been glorious if they clinched the division, but they started out too poorly. The only consolation was prolonged death. Hindsight, it was both the best and worst thing to happen. All that winning was fucking their draft position. And long term, the Panthers needed a franchise QB. The previous attempts at going to the second-hand carousel had failed. They needed to splurge on the brand new merchandise. And with only one shot at it, Carolina had to make a direct hit. David had himself a huge decision to make. Stay with a hot hand in Steve Wilkes, a coach that players love? Or traverse the great unknown? There's no denying that Wilkes did a good job with shoestring parts, but he wasn't the sexy option. Tepper wants the best, and the only way to do that is to splurge. Unlike last time, he isn't gunning for an elite college coach, but a proven NFL commodity. The Fourth Reich will rise from the ashes and lead the Panthers to glory. To aid him, David will spare no expense. He will bring together an all-star coaching staff, the best of the best, from completely different coaching philosophies. An OC from Sean McVay's system, a QB coach groomed down in Houston, a running back coach from Detroit, a passing game coordinator under Frank Reich in Indianapolis, and Jim Caldwell as an advisor. Too many cooks in the damn kitchen. And throwing money at every single thing might not fix that. But as long as they don't fuck up their franchise QB decision, they should be okay. Until the trade. Every great team has one, right? Carolina needed theirs. Good for them, the Texans fucked up their tanks, so the Bears are willing to move down to a crew capital for the number one pick. And as any analytical trend could tell you, the best chance to get the best is to pick first. For Tepper, there's no choice but to make it happen. There was only one major problem with this gambit. The Panthers paid way too much. Chicago laid out a hastily designed trap with a 5% success rate and Carolina fell face first into it. Two firsts and two seconds is fine enough, especially with the leverage the Bears had. But adding DJ Moore to the deal? One of the best receivers in franchise history? A guy that could really help out a young quarterback. They traded that in the package. No wonder why he's thriving in Chicago. Good God. 
And again, with Scott Federer's drafting record, there's no reason to doubt their acumen. The only thing here is generational failure. Kind of like David Tepper in the draft room. He learned from Snyder before him and meddled. Oh, you bet your sweet ass he meddled. Did Frank Reich really want CJ Stroud in the draft? Doesn't matter if that rumor's true or not. David wants Bryce Young, they get Bryce Young. And they'll all be in lockstep regardless if Tepper twisting arms or not. Here's one thing to understand. This whole situation would have never been made public if Stroud didn't look like a potentially generational quarterback in his rookie year. There are a bunch of better videos that go on in detail about how he's an absolute fucking gem I'll spare you in this one. Yet I'll argue if Stroud were in Carolina's system? I don't think even he could succeed with the shit on display. Remember how there were too many different cooks in the kitchen? The end result is shit on a plate. Bryce is getting destroyed. And while he has serious concerns that may never be fixed, dude has no chance of developing in this dung heap. Their offensive line schematics were completely overhauled. Mahler's forced to change to a zone blocking scheme. The only thing in the zone are opposing rushers. You wonder why E.K. Aquonu fell off a cliff? This is probably a good reason why. Since they don't pass, the running game gets nothing going. Paid big money to Miles Sanders in the offseason and he... Yeah. He was awful. But who could do anything behind this old line? It'd be Christian McCaffrey, who somehow managed to stay healthy for once in San Francisco. And is an MVP candidate. Lovely. Why didn't they just keep Deontay Foreman around again? Even if the O-line can somehow block, the Panthers must suffer through receivers that get absolutely no separation. The one guy that could with ease? You traded him. Their answer as a number one option this season was 33-year-old Adam Thielen. Be serious, boys. The god-awful coaching and play calling was merely icing laced with cyanide. Who's calling the plays? Frank Reich? Thomas Brown? I don't really know. They both fucking suck. I talk about the defense, but everyone on that front died a terrible death on the field. Except Eric Brown. Brian Burns might also be gone this offseason because they're idiots. And to think they could have had two first round picks they could have ruined for him. But at least they have the first. Oh, right. It goes to show is how you get this. Do I need to say more? Yes, I do. Because we need to get to the main culprit responsible for it. Over the years, throughout his time in finance and football, there would be a common term brought up by reporters and fans alike. David has what they call Tepper Tantrums, where his extremely impulsive and petulant nature would get the best of him on a repeated basis. With a disastrous season on top of other disastrous seasons, the Panthers were headed down Shit's Creek without a paddle. David took it about as well as you'd expect, with a Tepper Tantrum. Unfortunately, there wasn't a mirror around him, so he chose to blame the first person in loss. That happened to be Frank Reich. His ass canned like tuna. 11 games into his tenure. Yes, Reich was terrible as the head coach, but it says a hell of a lot more about Tepper if we're being honest. He chose poorly. Again. He's never used a search firm to hire coaches until this time around. He just hopes that throwing money around can fix things and say fuck it and burn the money in effigy. Which is hilarious because he preached patience with rule last year only to fire him a few weeks later. Maybe he'll throw around that set of brass balls he has to get it done. And of course, Federer got brass ball too. The dude fucking sucked and he deserved it. But Tepper needs to make himself the center of attention. Head to Duval in week 17 and see your true future. A thorough ass kicking by a team in the middle of a collapse themselves. And after that, David collapses in his own right. In his infinite patience and wisdom, he throws a drink at Jaguars fans as his team gets a drink thrown on them. Once again, no mirror round, so we'll accept a $300,000 fine and no apology to the fans in question. David said he was supposedly holding himself accountable for his actions a week earlier. The epitome of the Tepper experience. Dude, you're really that petty that you washed the peons below for their supposed insults? Honestly, I was a fool for not seeing it coming from a mile away. This was a man who had bought a mansion from the ex-wife of a man that didn't promote him at Goldman Sachs. And then demolished it. And built a mansion twice its size on the same spot. A little justice in this world, he claimed. This is a man who said after he got money, if there was a waiter that didn't kiss his ass, he could buy the restaurant on the spot and fire him. It's more than obvious that Tepper shouldn't be anywhere near a sports franchise. A lot of people shouldn't, and I put myself in that category. I'd be way too impulsive and fire everyone in the blink of an eye after a bad season or two. Tepper is more impulsive than me. That shouldn't happen. Now all of that is an issue entirely, but what really wraps this bowl of poison on the gift of shit is his sheer arrogance in the face of failure. Dude not only has an ego, he's got one the size of New York City. A 
chip on his shoulder that constantly has to be massaged and reinforced. Just listen to his recent press conferences and be amazed at the mental gymnastics that take place. Allegedly, in the ancient days of ten years ago, Charlotte was a muted, tuneless place. There was nary a song nor hum echoing throughout these depressing, sterile streets. But then came David Tepper. This man brought the gift of music to Charlotte. There was no other live concert or event that occurred before Tepper got here. The economic impact he's had on this city has been tremendous. This man even brought Lionel Messi to Charlotte. If it weren't for Tepper, this city would lack the one-day presence of a legendary footballer. Just don't look into Charlotte FC's affairs either. It's just as much of a shit pile as the Panthers are. In that arena, Tepper's fired two head coaches and an assistant in two seasons. The first one got axed for so-called front office conflicts. At least that team made the playoffs as a pity entry then got blown the fuck out of there. How long Dean Smith lasts? I give him about a year. Then again, I may be wrong. In other aspects of life, no one leaves David. No one. Note that this is what he does in public. In private, the culture of fear has to be immense. So to say that the Panthers aren't just a train wreck, but a catastrophic calamity that will go down as one of the worst teams on record? It's not all that shocking. Tepper should be throwing drinks at himself since he's patient zero. The team's not just in football hell, they're in straight up hell. A hell where opposing fan bases dominate the stadium landscape. And a fan base that was apathetic already is now at the point of defection. With constant Tepper tantrums imagining himself as the smartest man in the room and turning the brand into a toxic cesspool, is there any hope left? Tepper's never really been one to learn from his mistakes. And with his extremely arrogant, impulsive, and meddlesome nature, he's making Jimmy Haslam look like Art Rooney the goddamn second. As a former Panthers employee said, he ran off all the people that told him the truth. The truth is now Tepper's to decide. David got his start in business buying junk bonds from mailing companies. From what it seems to me, he's trying the same shit here. I don't get it. Money can't buy you much in the NFL except ridicule and derision. Jerry Richardson had plenty of flaws to go around, but compared to Tepper, that dude was a fucking paragon. When you make him look excellent in comparison, it's over. Rome wasn't built in a day, David says. If he ran that empire, we'd be learning about ancient Carthage in middle school. I'm now calling for a crusade against this franchise. Deus fucking Volt. Reasons were other than you didn't win. I mean, was there was there something I'm missing other than that you're he's eleven and you want me to read? You want, I can actually, you know, I, I shouldn't say that, but I actually read your columns and I can go back to your columns and regurgitate them. So you can read your own columns, okay? For that answer.